Yeah, I don't, there's so much doing the hoovering. Um, <laughs> so if that's if someone's doing the hoovering in your house, would you mind muting? <laughs> um, okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our meeting this morning of the Education Committee. Um, can we begin with any apologies for absence? I have an apology from Councillor McLean. Thank you. Um, do we have any declarations of interest in respect of any items this morning? No. Okay. Before we commence the items in the agenda, I just want to make a couple of welcomes this morning. Um, we're joined this morning um, for her first Education Committee as a fully fledged member of the Education Leadership Team um, by Siobhan McColgan, who's our new Head of Service for Equality and Equity. So uh, Siobhan is now uh, full-time in post, uh, having uh, left her post at uh, Calabar Primary. Um, so we welcome Siobhan this morning and look forward to her input over many years to come and her work as part of the team. We're also being joined by uh, two of our head teachers this morning who are going to um, you know, sh share their uh, experiences of school and remote learning over the, the past period. So we welcome Alistair McDonald, who's the head teacher Hill Primary uh, and Christine Downey, who's a head teacher at St. Luke's High School, Farhead, and we will hear from them as part of the presentation uh, in the first item. So, without further ado, we come to item three, which is the report on the quality of remote learning, uh, and Mrs. Collins is going to speak to this paper. Thank you, convener. The purpose of the report is to inform elected members of the report by the Education Department on remote learning and early learning in childcare settings, primary, secondary and special schools in East Renfrewshire. Elected members will be aware that in December 2020, as school recovery continued to evolve in response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the previous school closure period, which was March to August 2020, the Scottish Government announced further school closures. From January 2021, the context for learning and teaching in East Renfrewshire's early learning and childcare settings and all schools moved to remote learning. In East Renfrewshire, our schools and nurseries are empowered to develop policies and practices which best meet the communities they serve. Using guidance issued at local and national level, schools collaborated with key stakeholders to develop clear and helpful remote learning policies and guidance for pupils, staff and parents. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent periods of closure of education establishments, East Renfrewshire had well established and ongoing approaches to ensuring the quality of provision across all our ELC settings and schools. The quality improvement team play a pivotal role in providing support and challenge to schools on their quality of provision, as well as carrying out reviews which focus on aspects of provision. The move to remote learning was not dilute, has not diluted this expectation that schools will deliver high quality remote learning to meet the needs of their children and young people, nor has it diminished the role of the quality improvement team in East Renfrewshire and the role they play in providing that ongoing support and challenge. In January and February, Link Quality Improvement Officers engaged with their schools. A departmental tool, how effective is your remote learning, which can be found as part of the appendix, was issued with the ex expectation that school leaders would work in partnership with their link quality improvement officer to take a closer look at the remote learning offer. How effective is our remote learning? An overview of remote learning in Shremshire is a report on the very good remote learning provision in our schools. The report focuses on four key themes, engagement and wellbeing, learning, teaching and assessment, self-evaluation for self-improvement and digital capacity. The following key strengths were identified in the report. Leadership and commitment to remote learning by all staff. Increased levels of engagement of learners in learning, which was 86% in May 2020 and 95% in February 2021. A relentless focus on health and wellbeing and equity. A range of supports for engagement and wellbeing, in particular healthier minds, our educational psychologist services support resources. A commitment and creative approach to maintaining a sense of identity and whole school ethos. A greater range of learning experiences being offered to learners across a greater range of platforms. An increased range of both recorded and live delivery online with daily check-ins for all learners. Increased confidence of practitioners in delivering learning remotely and greater range of learning experiences being offered to learners than in previous lockdowns. 
In addition, the report highlighted some recommendations. recommendations. These included providing further professional learning with a particular focus on a pedagogy for remote learning, to further explore and invest in digital platforms that will support learners in all se sectors, and continue to explore opportunities to share standards of remote learning across stages, departments, schools and cluster. A full range of the strengths and recommendations can be found as part of the report, which is Appendix 2. I'm also delighted that Alistair MacDonald, Head Teacher of Maidenhill Primary School, and Christine Downey, Head Teacher of St Luke's, have agreed to join us today to further share the quality of provision taking place in their schools. Before I hand over to Alistair and then Christine, elected members are asked to note and comment on the con contents of the Education Department report on remote learning in our early learning childcare settings, primary, secondary and special schools. Thank you, Kavina. Thank you, Mrs Collins. So uh, before we move to um, what I think will be really worthwhile uh, and interesting presentations, are there any questions on the substance of the report or any comments? Mrs McIntyre. My only comment is to congratulate uh, the people who have put this together. It is a comprehensive report which I feel must enable must have helped the staff to 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 get that to get everything together. I, I know that it must be very, very difficult for staff. I cannot even start to imagine how complex it is, especially in secondary. But uh, I would just like to congratulate you on putting together such a comprehensive report. I'm sure it's been very useful for everyone concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, if there are no further comments at this stage, we'll, we'll move to the presentations and then I can uh, allow you know, some follow up questions to Janice or Mark at the conclusion of that. Um, so. Janice, are you? Or I think Leanne's here to do the tech. I think uh, we're going to share Alistair's presentation first, if you just bear with us. And Alistair, will, uh, and you can just begin once it's ready to share, Alistair. No problem. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Leanne. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Um, greetings from, from Maidenhill. Um, thank you for having me here to speak about how good our remote learning is within uh, Maidenhill Primary School and Nursery Class. Um, you won't be able to hear, but outside my door just now in our atrium area here at Maidenhill, there's a real excited buzz of children chatting, playing, learning together, interacting together. Um, and it's a lovely, um, lovely sound to hear. Uh, schools are obviously meant to be filled with children and they're very strange places when, when they're not. Um, and we know that nothing um, can and will ever um, compare with those interactions that the children are having right now and that are creating that buzz that, that I, can, I can hear. Um, so we're delighted that we have our nursery to primary three children with us. Um, for the last few weeks and that we will have all our children um, back with us on on Monday. Um, it just seems the way that things should uh, should be. Uh, that being said, however, um, as a staff team, um, from the evidence that we have gathered um, and as a school community, um, I think we are really confident um, in saying that this experience of remote learning um, over the last few months has been a very positive and productive experience. Um, thank you, Leanne. So um, really in looking closely at that question, how good, how effective is our remote learning and Maidenhill, we took into account the, 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 the four key themes from the, the department's um, principles of effective practice. Um, so we looked closely at assessment, at learning and teaching, at engagement and well-being, and at self-evaluation for uh, self-improvement. Thank you, Anne. And I think um, you know, contributing greatly this time around to that productivity and positivity uh, was a real sense of preparedness um, for this. Um, we were ready and up for the challenge. We've been preparing for this. Um, and improving um, our, our capacity in terms of remote learning 
pretty much right the way through this entire um, session. And actually, fact, probably since the, the, the very last lockdown. Um, so, yes, when we, we, we got the call, um, we were confident that we were going to be able to provide something that was effective and worthwhile for our children. Um, we had been given um, a clear steer nationally and locally um, about the expectations for remote learning, but we did feel confident that we had the, the autonomy um, to develop our offer in a way that was going to best suit um, our children and the context um, of our school. We've been working um, as a community throughout, as I say, this entire session to develop a clear rationale, a policy and guidance for remote learning. Um, we have been well supported with devices um, in Maidenhill by the department um, and our, our home learning programme right the way from August um, has encouraged children to become familiar and confident in using those devices and in using the, the online platforms, the full G suite that we're, we're using um, for our remote learning um, offer at the moment. We've also been well supported by um, the department's digital strategy. All the DigiHub initiatives um, have been fantastic. As I mentioned, resourcing um, and the opportunities for professional learning um, you know, within the department, but also at school level. We have three um, digital leaders within Maidenhill who have been fantastic in supporting uh, colleagues, building that confidence and um, building that capacity within, within the school. We've also devoted considerable collegiate time over the course of the session, including our full um, inset day in October, um, on what effective learning and teaching was going to look like through the remote learning context. And we've always been cautious, I think, um, throughout all of this, never to lose that focus on learning and teaching, um, no matter how dazzled you can sometimes be by the, the technology. Um, effective learning and teaching is effective learning and teaching, regardless of how, um, you know, regardless of the context um, that we're looking at it from. OK, thank you, Leanne. Um, so, you know, as with all good learning approaches, um, we started by thinking about um, assessment. So we, we have a real focus in Maidenhill on planning um, for assessment, and we felt it was really important to maintain that throughout this period of remote learning. So what do we want the children um, to be able to do, and how will we really confidently know um, when they can do it? That was always going to be our starting point. So the fact that we were thinking about it within a remote context and through a, a digital report a approach was a secondary um, consideration to that. Um, we knew that effective assessment would need effective interaction, and that really informed and shaped how we, we structured um, our learning over the course of a day and a week. Um, we placed a clear emphasis on assessment as for learning approaches, so um, sharing learning intentions, success criteria, peer and self-assessment and meaningful feedback. We used a range of digital approaches to do that, and I don't know if you can see in the slide, we've got all sorts of message boards and digital post-it notes and all sorts of things um, going on, but we found that um, our live check-ins um, and our daily plenary sessions um, staff really felt that proved to be the most effective way um, to provide um, that feedback to, to children. We've continued to track progress using, using the systems in place in any um, so-called normal term. That hasn't changed um, at all, and all those systems and processes have continued to run our professional dialogue and our learning conversations. But we do recognise um, the importance as children are returning um, to school of summative and diagnostic approaches to assessment, um, because that will give our teachers um, you know, real confidence in the professional judgments that they've already been making and have continued to make, and then the evidence that they've been gathering um, over this period of time. OK, thank you, Anne. Um, so, uh, as we mentioned, we knew that effective interaction was really going to be key in meeting um, all our learners' needs. Um, we knew that we would have to um, kind of embrace a full range of approaches um, and find a balance of approaches to make our provision um, as effective and as flexible as it could be for, for our families. 
So I think we did find an effective balance between, um, you know, the sort of live synchronous lessons and check-ins, the pre-recorded asynchronous lessons, independent learning tasks, and a good mixture of online and offline tasks. But again, the, the, the key message that we kept emphasising was think about the learning first, then think of the way the, the digital option and the way that you're going to communicate it. Don't ever lose sight um, of the learning. And you can just see in that slide, um, the, the, there's some examples of um, some of the kind of virtual um, task boards and programs um, that our, our, our teachers were using. And there's a wee example there, I don't know if you can see it, um, of a wee task that the nursery class set for parents to support parents in, in order that they could embrace the, the, the kind of playful pedagogy approach with, with their children. Okay, um, we particularly, oh sorry, we particularly emphasised a, um, a, a flipped learning approach of um, pre-teaching. Um, that our, our staff all um, took part in um, supported study for our children um, last term. Um, whereby that flipped learning approach was kind of integral to what we're doing and that was easily transferred um, into a remote learning provision. We knew that um, to meet um, all the needs of our children, that differentiation um, and differentiated approaches would be crucial. Um, so the option of differentiated check-ins for our different groups of learners throughout the day um, I think each child um, had four opportunities to check in over the course of the day. Um, so that wasn't necessarily a live lesson, but they had that, that opportunity to interact um, with our teacher and that became central um, to our provision. Um, early feedback from our children led us to think um, more about collaboration. Um, at Maiden Hill, we really value um, the children engaging in collaborative, child-led, investigative um, learning. Um, and by its nature, that could be a challenge within a remote learning provision, which may tend to be a wee bit more adult led. Um, but we had a working group of, of staff um, who are working and are continuing to work on developing approaches um, for collaboration, because that is really what our, our, our children were looking for. And the slide that we were seeing just now is just an example from our primary five class of how our class teacher was structuring um, his his week and his day, and that was all shared in advance with our parents and children, um, so that our families could kind of plan um, plan round that. Um, so we made sure that that was all shared. And in terms of the flow of a day and a week, um, you know, our, our teachers were encouraged to think about how they would normally plan um, for the flow of the day and the week within the within their classrooms um, as well. Um, this teacher in particular. Uh, really, um, you know, really placed an emphasis on allowing children to have informal um, interactions, because again, that's really what the children were, were, were feeding back to us, that they wanted those opportunities um, to meet with their friends, with their peers, um, and to work with them. So our teacher really embraced that through a virtual playground um, and the virtual experiences that you, you can see there. Um, that were available. Um, the children loved that. So, um, as he's saying there, they had opportunities, for example, to go on a safari um, and um, to take part in theatre uh, performances as well. And it just gave a great opportunity for the children to be able to interact at that more kind of informal um, level as well. Thank you, Leanne. So, in terms of um, engagement and well-being, we continuously have asked and continue to um, ask ourselves, what does effective engagement look like? What do we mean by effective um, engagement? We, um, you know, we, we are confident um, that our engagement um, started off in the first week around about 95% and then kind of averaged out at about 97%. And we're confident that that is a meaningful figure because we really have tried to explore what engagement um, meant. Um, just one interesting thing, um, the 3% the who we kind of thought need a wee bit more support with engagement weren't the same continuous 3% over each week. It changed from week to week and that obviously um, reflected the different circumstances that families um, were going through at different points um, through the, 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 this period of remote learning. 
Um, but we realised that we would only begin to understand engagement if we invested time in real rigorous tracking of engagement. So our staff worked really closely together to develop an effective and detailed tracking tool, which provided us with a wealth of data. But we knew as a, learn as a leadership team, we had to facilitate the time for our teachers to be able to do this. Um, but it was time that was really sp well spent because it meant when our leadership team met regularly to analyse the data and the judgments that our teachers were providing, we could spot the trends and the potential issues straight away and we knew almost instantly um, where we had to target um, support to um, both children and parents um, on an almost um, daily basis. Um, emotional and physical well-being have also been a real priority. Our, our health and well-being working group of staff have played a leading role throughout this, in ses this session in developing initiatives um, and guidance based on the, the department's healthier mind resource, as Janice has already mentioned. Um, so using the organisers and the themes within that, um, the work was already in place. We were, again, you know, quite well prepared and that could easily be transferred into the remote context. Um, I have to mention we've also been ably supported um, with online tutorials in terms of our kind of physical health uh, from our active schools um, service. Thanks, Leanne. So throughout um, the, the, this remote learning process, we felt it was important um, that the full range of our self-evaluation pr processes continued as normal. Um, that hasn't changed. We did decide that we wanted to be really proactive in gaining the views of our children and our parents and our staff team. So by week um, two, I think we had issued a full suite of stakeholder surveys um, because we knew that was the best way of helping us to make improvements. Um, we also were involved in Education Scotland's review of remote learning um, and we worked closely with uh, our quality improvement officer on the department's uh, how good is our remote learning um, toolkit and that also helped to really kind of sharpen our focus um, on self-evaluation. So although this period of remote learning is coming to an end, I, I feel that the process is ongoing. Um, whether we ever need to use remote learning um, provision in exactly the same way again, I, I, I don't know. Um, but the skill sets that we've developed, the new approaches that we've gained confidence in, uh, the enhanced opportunities for communication that we have, um, we've all seen, just undoubtedly add more strings to our, our learning and teaching goal. Um, we've clearly identified some next steps in relation to our own context, which we're already tackling. Um, but I think we are going to come out of this period with a renewed um, and invigorated sense of purpose um, and a really clear idea of the, the kind of priorities for our children and our, our families um, moving forward. And if you'll forgive me, just the next um, few wee slides are just some quotes um, from um, our children. Elian, if you could move to that next one. So, um, you know, when they, they've served, they, uh, you know, we, we gathered the views and we were overwhelmed by how positive um, our children and our parents were um, about the, the work that our, our, our teachers were doing. So it is something that we're, we're very proud of. Um, but yeah. Um, we're kind of, I'm kind of blowing Maiden Hill's own trumpet here, but those are some quotes from from our children. Um, and just the next uh, couple of slides, Leanne, are just some quotes from our parents um, who, you know, ha have been really supportive as a school community. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. And I think we're going to hear from Mrs Downey now. I think you're on mute, Christine. Thank you. Good morning and thank you also for the opportunity to come along this morning and share with you the approach that we've taken to remote learning in St Luke's. And Janice had asked me to speak with a particular focus on how we've been meeting learners' needs during this period of time. It's really fascinating to listen to Alistair there because he and I haven't collaborated at all on this and yet you're going to hear sort of golden threads running through both of our presentations and I think that's indicative of the fact that the 
guidance from the department as well as the national guidance has really been helpful in ensuring a more consistent approach, I think, across all of our schools and settings. It was certainly interesting for me, Alistair, to hear how much we have in common, um, and I'm sure you'll see that as we go through. Leanne, could you move on to the next slide, please? It was really helpful that this time around we had a wealth of self-evaluation evidence to help us to reflect on the last lockdown and what had worked well along with what we were hoping to improve this time around. At the start of this academic year, when we all returned to school full time, we began a programme of professional learning where we sought to learn with and from one another to upskill our teachers and support staff with the necessary digital skills to support any future disruption to learning and teaching. And this professional learning has continued all year and so it placed us in a very strong position when the announcement came to move to remote learning at Christmas time. We made significant use of the, the days following the Christmas break to engage with our staff and to agree overarching principles which would underpin all of our work this time around. We discussed pedagogical approaches to ensure that we would have consistency of high quality learning and teaching across the curriculum and staff were supported to engage with the national e-learning offer as well as the local authority and national guidance from Education Scotland to support our remote learning planning. In terms of the principles in, around and about pedagogy, we had long discussions like you did, Alistair, around about how we approach learning and teaching in school face to face and how we might be able to adapt that most effectively to support the digital remote approach. We had embedded Google Classroom last session and we continued with it all year so that our young people were very familiar with that. And it's how we continue all of our home learning, even when we're face to face teaching. So we were ready to go in terms of our digital setup, but in terms in terms of pedagogy, we talked with our teachers about pedagogies most likely to increase engagement, motivation and pedagogies that would make sure they were varied because we didn't want young people sitting on a screen all day every day and we were very conscious of making sure there was a wide variety of approaches. Whilst like you did Alistair, replicating the, the shape of this, the lesson that we have here in St Luke's with our learning intentions, success criteria and so on. We were very conscious that the key feature that makes remote learning quite different from face to face is the constant feedback learners get in class day in, day out, minute by minute, the teacher circulating the room and being able to kind of nudge children in the right direction as soon as they see they need that input. So we talked long and hard about how we could replicate that in a remote setting. And like yourself, Alistair, lots of different digital solutions there. We use jam boards and whiteboards and all sorts of ways for young people to get that instant feedback from their teacher and we also made sure that we had the digital devices that our teachers would need at home which we'll talk about a little bit more later to be able to give that kind of real sort of talking a child through a worked example if that's what they needed and so on that on the spot feedback as the young people needed it. Underpinning all of our work were of course the principles of excellence and equity where we're looking for that high quality experience for our learners. We were determined that this wasn't going to be a period of continuity in learning. It was going to be a period of progression in learning and we were very keen to make sure that our young people were able to learn new content and that when new content was delivered to young people, it would be done so in a way that we would do that also in school to make sure it was chunked up, that they could understand it, that we were checking in progress as we went. And of course that underpinning principle of equity to make sure that all learners had the same access to their learning and all learners were supported and got the support that they needed. And we also put into place those quality assurance processes. In fact, all departments were asked after those first few days where we met together to agree these principles to fill in a departmental pro forma where they outlined their pedagogical approaches, their approaches to feedback, their approaches to communication, their approaches to quality assurance. And those have been live documents that the senior leadership team have quality assured every week as we've gone through this period of remote learning. And it's really helped us to be able to share where there's outstanding practice across the school. We've had meetings with our principal teachers where it's been all about sharing best practice because in their quality assurance learning walks or virtual learning walks, they're bringing back the best of what they're seeing and sharing it with one another so that it can very quickly adapt good practice and share it amongst the teams. We were also keen as we were discussing those overarching principles of our approach to remote learning to make a support for remote learning offer also. It was important to us that young people with additional support needs continue to access the level of support that they get in school when they were during this period of remote learning. And you'll see there are a number of different strategies that we did to do that and I'll unpack them a little bit more as we go through. We handed out 
sheets to teachers to help them to understand best ways to engage their learners and how to support their organisation. We were determined that the learning loss we had identified from last time around and the interventions put in place would continue over this period of time. And we made sure that there was an equity of resources where we're thinking about well-being. We knew that this was a time in secondary schools when young people would be making their choices in terms of their learner journey about which subjects to be choosing next. So that had to be part of our support for their learning during this period of time. And it was important to us that we maintained our strong relationships with the learners and their families. And as a result of these overarching principles, which I'll talk a bit more about in practice, we had a really strong, high, consistent engagement rate also, other than our young people were unwell. Leanne, if you could move the slide, please. So we recognise that many families might be sharing devices and that many parents would probably be juggling working from home whilst also trying to support their child's learning at home. So to mitigate against any potential barriers that that might cause, we agreed that all learning for the following week would be posted each Friday to the Learners Google Classroom. And this enabled the families to plan access to devices for live events and also gave them the opportunity to talk together and discuss and plan for the week ahead. Weekly planning templates were given to each family each week also, with some guidance around well-being on those weekly planners about how to divide up their work, when to take breaks, suggestions of how learners might spread their work out over the course of the day. And in addition to that weekly planning, we were asked to pilot for the authority Google Guardian, which has been an absolutely fabulous tool for keeping our parents up to date with where our young people are in their learning. So each week, the parents will receive a summary of the child's previous week's learning, a, a summary of all the work that's been submitted for marking, and also a summary of the week to ahead and what the learning would be involving for that week ahead, so that again, parents had that knowledge of the live meets and so on. And our parents have responded very positively to that. They've really enjoyed being able to, you know, sort of have the reality of, of what their young person is doing, rather than perhaps the, the usual answers that maybe some teenagers might give their parents, it's all fine and I'm getting on with it. They had that detail to support where they were. We also had weekly and daily support for young people who needed additional support to plan their learning. So for young people who a week's support would have been enough, they would have a meet with their principal teacher of pupil support on a Monday morning to talk through the whole week's work, to plan all of that out and to make sure that everything was fine with the young person and that there weren't going to be any issues for that week. For young people with additional support needs, they had a one to one meet every single morning, more than just a daily check in. It was a meet with their pupil support teacher to be able to talk about the previous day's learning, any difficulties they'd experienced and also to plan ahead for that day's learning also. And that was particularly well received with the young people with additional support needs. And I think the routine of starting the day first thing in the morning with that one to one was very helpful for them. We were conscious that there would also be a fair bit of anxiety perhaps for some of our parents moving into this second period of remote learning and so we produced a tips for parents document to really underpin principles that they might find helpful in supporting their child to outline where they could get support if things were difficult or if they were struggling and also sort of just little tips and ideas that might make it easier for the whole family along with that reassurance that we weren't asking them to teach their children that was our job we were just looking for their support around planning and making best use of the young person's time. We were also very keen that with that equity principle at the heart of what we were doing, that not all of our young people would have the same access to the devices. Not all of our young people would have the same peace and quiet at home, perhaps, to be able to study and to work. And so whilst every single class was assured of live events for every single subject, we made sure that key elements of every live event was, were recorded and posted on the Google Classrooms also, so that young people could go back and revisit the learning again and again, or if they hadn't been able to attend live, they still had that key learning from their teacher voicing that to them, and that was particularly well received. And you can see just towards the bottom of the slide there a couple of comments from some of our learners about the impact of that. And I think the one that you know sort of strikes me is that the fourth year learner being able to rewatch and review is really helpful for study. And that gives us some pause for thought as we move forward and we're thinking about perhaps recording key learning when we're back to face to face teaching so that our young people can again have that opportunity to rewatch and relearn and help them with their study. Leanne, could we move on, please? 
In terms of additional support for remote learning throughout this period, we've really tried to replicate um, the support which learners with additional support needs would normally receive in school. So, for example, in school, learners who have dyslexia would meet regularly with a pupil support teacher to go through toe by toe work to help them understand phonics and patterns and so on. That continued. All young people who were doing that in school had a one to one Google meet every week to be able to continue to make progress with that. In our school, we have a number of young people with attachment difficulties and we have nurture, group, nurture groups to help them and to support them. And they would meet twice a week in the mornings with a, a small group of other young people with similar issues and with their nurture teacher to help them to cope with the week ahead. And so we continue to do that at the times that our young people would normally experience those nurture group meetings. And it meant that those groups have still managed to maintain their relationships with one another while still having that steady contact with their nurture teacher. And we're, we're confident that when those young people need to return to school because they've had that consistency, it's going to make them easier because those relationships have been maintained. In addition to that, we were conscious with the pressures on our senior phase young people just now at this time of year, they would be practicing again and again against the clock to be able to prepare for their, their examinations. And we were really conscious that that's difficult for a young person who requires a reader and a scribe if they're having to do that from home. So again, we've been able to use Google Meet to offer that support to our senior phase learners who are practicing and preparing for their exams. And that's been invaluable because, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to do that on the day if you've not had lots of practice in the run up. So it's been helpful for their study too. Once we had set up our hubs for our key worker and vulnerable children, we also had a look at our children with additional support needs who were worried may become vulnerable if they didn't have that regular contact with school, the regular routine and the regular face to face support that perhaps they need. And so over the course of a week, 28 young people with significant additional support needs attended our hub um, so that they could get that specific support for their learning. And that's been particularly helpful with the engagement of our young people with additional support needs. Some of our young people with ASD really benefit in their normal school week from our gardening club because we recognise that, that hypersensitivity can sometimes be overwhelming and they need a, a release from that planned into their, their school week. And so because that gardening club takes place outdoors, we were able to continue to continue that with the young people who benefit from it. And their parents tell us that, that was a real, real key part in their week about helping them to de-stress, come into school, have that engagement and get back on with their learning. Every single young person with an additional support need, whether they attended the hub or not, had a really significant beyond the daily check in. It was a proper meet with a support assistant to really talk through their learning as well. And after the last lockdown, we had done lots of assessment to identify where any learning loss might have taken place and in particular focusing on literacy and numeracy. And over the course of this session, lots of interventions were ongoing with um, teachers volunteering to support young people through literacy and numeracy workshops. And again, all of those teachers continued to volunteer with that work through this period of time. And those young people continued to have their literacy and numeracy interventions. So we're hopeful then when we come back and we do some further reassessing that that learning loss hasn't slipped further back. And indeed, we've been continuing to address it during this session second period of lockdown and you can see there a little quotation from Isabella about how much that support for her learning has meant for her. Leanne could we move on please? It was important to us that we all our young people were equipped with everything that they would need to be able to successfully engage with their remote learning and having our building open this time around has been absolutely invaluable because it's really enabled us to be flexible and responsive to our learner and our teacher needs with regards to resources. At the start of the year, we were conscious that there would be disruption, whether it was going to be this period of remote learning that we have experienced or because young people would be isolating at home. We were conscious lots more learning was going to be done at home this year. And so every child we were able to use our managed savings to give every child a home learning pack. So all young people already had home with them, all the materials that they would need, whether that was jotters, pens, pencils, art packs for the younger ones, scientific calculators for our first years who hadn't yet purchased those, 
and whiteboards so that again teachers could see on camera their, their feedback, their responses quickly. So those home learning packs were already at home and they've been really helpful given that we closed during the Christmas holidays, not knowing that we wouldn't be opening up again for full face to face teaching. It was great that we already had them in place and we could hit the ground running. We were also conscious from the last lockdown that our teachers needed resources also because whilst we were able to equip them all with laptops to be able to deliver their, their, their Google Meets and their lessons and so on, there was other technology required if we were going to be able to really effectively deliver live elements. And so all teachers in our school, again, using the managed savings, were purchased a graphics tablet and a visualizer to enable them to, to video, to record, and to, to post that learning and teaching online. And the graphics tablets have been particularly useful because what they enable us to do is say, for example, a young person hasn't understood a maths question, the teacher can use a graphics tablet to do a voiceover as they're doing a worked example of how to do that particular maths. Um, and then post that for the individual young person. It's quick, it's easy, it doesn't take up a lot of memory either. So we can be quickly posting quick feedback to learners if they're struggling and that's been really helpful also. And we also at the start of the year did lots of workshops, teachers leading one another in all of the use of these devices and how to use them best to support learning. And we're really confident that they'll continue to be useful devices as we move forward. Those visualizers now are in every classroom and they're essential tools for feedback even during face-to-face -face teaching. So they're going to be really helpful moving forward. And also the graphics tablets allow when our teachers have to remain their two meters distance from the young people, they're able to be at their desk and still talk young people through worked examples that will then um, cast on to the board for them to see. So they've been particularly helpful. In addition to that, we've organised regular pickups from the school. And of course, for simple things like jotters and art packs and what have you, but we've also been really keen that young people didn't need to have their learning stilted in perhaps some of their practical subjects also. So musical instruments have been given out to those who are doing national qualifications and didn't have them at home. PE equipment have been given out to young people to help them maintain their, their well-being. We've given out mountain bikes, basketballs, whatever young people have needed, because some of our young people don't have outdoor spaces. So to be able to have a mountain bike enables them to get out and about and, and, and look after their well-being in that way. We did that last time around also, and all resources were returned because the young people were so grateful to have them. Um, and, and again, that's been very helpful this year. But it's also helped with learning and teaching. You know, there have been some strange things that we've asked young people to pick up. There was one memorable day where there were 30 red cabbages in our games hall for them to pick up to do a science experiment at home. And then it's also enabled us to do real life in real life cooking with our young people in home economics. So they've picked up recipe bags, taken them home. Their teachers recorded the lesson at home using a visualizer, posted it and then done a live meet to talk the young people through that and pause when she has to pause the lesson and so on. So it's really been helpful having the building open that we can be so responsive to the learning needs and be able to do that. One of the other things our schools engaged with is Fair Share. You may have heard of it. It's a social enterprise um, where it gathers food that would have otherwise gone to landfill, but is still absolutely fit for human consumption. And we invested in that over a year ago. Um, and it's been so helpful in that every Wednesday, our young people who are living in poverty have food delivered or they pick it up themselves if they're able to, for, to feed their family. And I remember the first week we did it, a young person speaking to me to say, Miss, I've had a hot dinner every day this week. And that's a tremendous impact that we can have in our young people because if they're not well fed and they're not comfortable, then they're not able to learn and they're not able to focus. So it's been a really helpful thing we've engaged in. It's also really helped our home economics creativity and budget because we use that in our cook clubs and so on, not knowing what we're going to get from Fair Share every week. And so we've had young people making, oh for goodness sake, all sorts of things from venison stew to all sorts of unusual foods that perhaps they wouldn't usually try. And we've used a real ready steady cook approach to that because they don't know what they're getting. So this is about skills and how are you going to be creative in making something out of this bag of ingredients. So it's benefited us as a school in terms of our, you know, supply of food for home economics but it's also absolutely a huge benefit to our young people in poverty and over this second lockdown I have to say the numbers accessing that resource have increased quite significantly and I'm really indebted to our teachers who come in every Wednesday to make sure that that food gets out to our families. And you can see there, there's a lovely quotation from Aoife who's in fourth year about the difference that this 
approach to resources has meant for her. Ever since I've been off school, it hasn't stopped me from being able to do my music work, as I have all my resources in Google Classroom for theory. And during the Jota collection days at school, I was able to go up and collect an instrument to carry out my practical work. I feel that my music gives me great pleasure and enjoyment, especially during lockdown, as it stops me from getting bored. I want to continue my learning journey by taking higher music in S5 and hopefully progressing to advanced higher in S6. National 5 Music offers you the platform to be creative, imaginative and original. And I think that just really sums up, you know, why it's so important that we do think about the resources that young people have at home to support them in their learning during this period in time. Christine, Leanne, can, I, Christine can, I, can I maybe, I know you've got a lot more to maybe say and we'll maybe put it with the notes with the, the meeting uh, and maybe give some elected members an opportunity to maybe ask you some questions. Thank you. Of course. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Christine. That was really um, comprehensive and really interesting. Um, and definitely we can get both of those presentations from Alistair and from Christine and, and certainly share those. Um, just want to give people that I'm conscious of time, so just want to give people the opportunity to ask questions um, to Janice and Mark about the broader piece. Um, if anyone has anything they want to ask at this stage. No. OK, I mean, I, I think what we've had this morning is uh, a really comprehensive report. I'm really pleased to see it. Um, this has undoubtedly been a hugely challenging time. Um, I think we have learned uh, so much in this process. It's been very much a journey um, from the first lockdown uh, and the first set of remote learning through to, to this experience as well. And I think what you can see essentially is the trends of um, how that learning has been put into into practice and used to really improve the offer to all of our young people uh, and i think just to pick up on some of the comments that, that mary had made i think staff have been absolutely key to this um, in terms of the leadership of our schools but also in terms of all those staff who have really risen i think to the challenge and it has been a huge challenge um, and have adapted uh, and really had the interest and the well-being of our young people at heart um, you, you know, for, for, for teaching staff particularly, that's what's been at the foremost of their mind is ensuring that young people's wellbeing is supported. And I know speaking to many of our teachers, that's been, you know, the key has been often being able to have check-in time with young people and speak to them about, you know, how they are coping with this, this um, existence, this lockdown experience. And, and I think that's been invaluable, particularly in terms of mental health, which everyone is obviously uh, dealing with throughout this time. So I think a big um, thank you to our teachers, also to our support staff in schools, um, who also have been helping keep um, the show on the road, if you like, in terms of our buildings and the hub model and all of that stuff as well, uh, and have been supporting teachers to do their job. So for me, a really comprehensive and helpful report. Um, we are delighted, of course, that we're, we're on a journey back to um, face to face learning. Obviously, there are challenges within that and we need to continue to support all of our staff uh, in that respect as well. Um, but thank you to Christine and to Alistair for their input. OK, I see Gordon Wallace, Principal Wallace, I see your hand if you want to come in. Uh, thank you, convener. Yeah, just to say to Mr McDonald, and Mrs Downey, uh, Quite extraordinary enthusiasm after a year of what you've been through. Um, I wonder, uh, I can imagine that, can you imagine this a year ago if um, the powers that be said, right, we're going to have a year's experiment here, uh, let's see how things get on. And can you imagine the what it would cost from the very start, the kind of billions that have been put into uh, where you've been thrown into a situation which was not designed to um, to be like this, uh, but at the end of it, the experience and the knowledge that you have built during that time. Now, I'm very conscious. For example, you mentioned flipped learning earlier on, Mr. McDonald, and I'm, I'm sure it'll be the same with Mrs. Downey. I mean, the, the online experience uh, contributes so much to to, to flipped learning. And I'm just trying to think of all these uh, major advantages and major um, probably findings that you've had that you never thought would happen. You certain advantages that have come along. You thought, but I wish I'd thought of that from the first place. I think, in short, what I'm getting at here, I would like to think, if you think of the investment that has gone into this, uh, the, the the tears, sweat, and all the rest of it. 
uh, that at the end of this, there's going to be some huge things that we can take from this experience that will actually can become part of the educational process, particularly when you're mentioning things like flipped learning and, and this online and things like instructions coming from teachers that uh, youngsters can come back. Oh, I must have another look at that. Uh, what was it the teacher said? Um, yeah, I would just like to, well, in short, congratulate all you uh, and the enthusiasm and the, the work that you've gone in. If, if, I, if I can put in an example here, I've got something like a sort of three or four hour contract with City of Glasgow College as a lecturer there. And I know what I went through. Uh, and and it, your teachers are working 30, 40, 50 hours on something like this. So it's had a, a major impact. Uh, and I think we're all well aware of that. So in short, thank you to let's hope that we can grasp a lot of the advantages and use it moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all in agreement with that. You know, um, this has been a, a, a horrendous situation in some ways, but, um, you know, there has been invention in this as well, and, and we need to try and take the positives out of what has been a really difficult situation. So I think you're absolutely right in terms of our learning across the board will be how do we keep the, the good things. Uh, and certainly I know Mrs Collins that we'll be, be looking at that across the piece in East Renfrewshire, across all of our schools, and also sharing that good practice and learning. So, you know, and, and that's been at the heart of this, what um, what our schools doing that other schools can learn from as well. So certainly as Education Committee, I'm sure we'll be keeping a very close eye on that and, and working uh, with the department so that we, we move the agenda forward. OK, thank you. Are there any, any further comments? No. OK, we're asked, uh, we've are been asked to note the report this morning, so I think we're all happy to do that. Uh, and just once again, if we can thank uh, Mrs Downey and Mr McDonald for their time. Uh, I know they're very busy in terms of preparations ahead of, ahead of Monday and, uh, and getting ready to welcome young people back. So please pass on our thanks to your staff. Uh, and I hope you have an enjoyable uh, week ahead when, when young people uh, come back in a more full way into, into your schools as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you. Alistair. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Great. Thank okay, you. We, we, we come then to item four, um, which is uh, a report on the progress on implementing the alternative certification model in East Renfrewshire, relating obviously to national qualifications. And the director is going to speak to this paper. Thank you, convener. Um, this paper updates the elected members on the progress that has been made in implementing the alternative certification model in East Renfrewshire as part of the uh, 2021 certification process. Committee will be aware, um, very well aware um, of the decision last year to close the schools and the subsequent announcement that for the first time in history, uh, there would be no examination diet um, and an alternative model was put in place. In October 2020, following the publication of the independent review by Professor Priestley of the 2020 qualifications process and in light of the ongoing COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the Deputy First Minister announced the suspension of the National Five Examinations Diet and then in December 2020 it was announced that there would be no external assessments in higher or advanced higher and as a, as a result the entire 2021 National Qualifications Examination Diet has been cancelled and replaced by what's been called the Alternative Certification Model. Education Committee will be aware uh, from the paper last June and then the annual presentation of the SQA results that East Renfrewshire schools were well placed to provide rigorous evidence based estimates for the 2020 process. And paragraphs 10, 13, and 14 of the paper outline some of the work that they did uh, in terms of that process and the impact of that focus on assessment and moderation that has been there for a number of years within East Renfrewshire and of the effective tracking and monitoring systems. To support schools this session uh, to implement this alternative certification model, the Education Department has set up a working group with representatives from each secondary school. The role of this group is to establish a clear and consistent approach to assessment and moderation across East Renfrewshire in line with national guidance. An appendix one of the papers provides elected members with a copy of the policy that this group has developed around assessment and moderation and uh, this policy has been reviewed by another local authority as part of a peer review process 
Paragraph 16 highlights a, a kind of key difference in the 2021 process um, with estimates based purely on demonstrated uh, evidence this year. Unlike 2020, there's no element of inferred attainment. Nationally, there are sort of five key stages to the model and paragraph sets 17 sets these out in more detail. East Renfrewshire schools are working collaboratively to implement this model uh, with schools paired up or in trios to validate one another's assessments and then to moderate candidate evidence uh, using the very strong subject group network that exists across our schools. The February in service day was devoted to uh, time for the secondary staff to take part in that validation and moderation process uh, ready for returners uh, coming back in March. During May and June, the quality improvement team will support schools to analyze the provisional estimates and carry out any internal checks, uh, ensuring that there is that rigorous quality assurance of the process. They'll, in, this will include supporting schools to review estimates for key equity groups. In addition, the SQA will review and provide feedback on a sample of evidence to support that consistency and understanding of standards across Scotland. Stage five of the, the model, um, is uh, an appeals process. This is still to be finalised uh, after a national consultation. Within East Renfrewshire, schools are working closely, as I've said, with the education department, with pupils and with parents to implement this model. Discussions have taken place with the parent council chairs, with the head boys and head girls as representatives of the pupil body. And part of that uh, it will result in further communication, including sort of Q&A information shared via the council website. Given the strong practice that exists in moderation and assessment, the rigorous tracking uh, and effective collaboration within and across the authority, East Renfrewshire schools are well placed uh, to continue to implement the alternative certification model and ensure that the hard work of our S4 to 6 learners is rightly and fairly recognised uh, this year. So elected members are asked to note and comment on the education department's progress in, in implementing the alternative certification model in East Renfrewshire as part of the 2021 certification process. Thank you, convener. Uh, thank you, director, for that uh, comprehensive report. I think it's very important that it's before us today, uh, given um, the experience last year and indeed the, 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 the different uh, model that will be used this year. Can I invite uh, anyone who wishes to comment on the paper to do so? Councillor Buchanan. Yeah, thanks, Wiener. I think yeah, another very welcomed report because it does give us some element of clarity as to the process for this year. Now, we know the difficulties last year in terms of a very rushed process and the outcomes of that, which were then very difficult. Uh, so this year, I'm glad to see that we have this paper. And I think it very much follows on from the previous paper in terms of that, that highlighted the outstanding work that has been done uh, to continue the educational services uh, across the authority and through all of our uh, learning campuses um, across the, the, the last year, which has been extremely difficult for everyone. Um, the comments that we, we had from both Mr. McDonald and Mrs. Downey show that the depth of that work that has gone on, and that very much underpins, I think, this paper as well, uh, because it enables us, as you rightly said, Mr. Ratter, uh, We've had in place measures for a long time in terms of our ability to track uh, our children and their progress. And I think the work that we've just heard about in the previous paper and this paper uh, show the benefits of having had that in place. The pandemic, clearly none of us uh, would wish that uh, to happen again. And hopefully we are moving into a renewal phase where much of the, the learning that we've had through the last year, uh, we can take from as well, as had already been outlined. Uh, but I think it's vital that we do have this in place. It gives us some clarity, particularly it gives our children clarity uh, and what their expectations can be. Uh, and again, credit to all of the work uh, by our teaching and support staff uh, to get us to this stage. And I think we can rest assured that uh, when the marks are given, that they are valid, they are tangible, and everyone will understand how we've managed to get to that position. And I think that's what's important moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buchanan. 
Uh, Mr. Morris. Thanks, thanks, convener uh, and uh, Councillor McCarran. Uh, almost took some of the words out of my mouth because I was just going to indicate that obviously, the, and just reflecting the fact that the previous agenda item obviously highlighted the huge amount of work that's been done, and this agenda item, as the director has just pointed out, highlights the huge amount of work that lies ahead um, between between now and, um, and and the 25th of June. So um, it's, it's it's really just to kind of acknowledge that the, the, the work that's gone into this and acknowledge the support that's being offered, and no doubt all um, teachers in East Renfrewshire will be looking forward to the successful um completion of, of 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 this exercise but um you know there's a huge amount of work to be done it's a kind of all hands to the pump situation i think and um what the director has highlighted today provides a a very kind of clear framework for that going forward thank you mr morris any further comments on the paper Okay, I'm not seeing any any hands indicating. Um, I think we've had two very worthwhile reports. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wallace. Yeah, uh, thanks, um, convener. Yeah, I think it was just to kind of underline. Um, my understanding is that the assessment process is probably about the, the, the most demanding um, of of everything that the teachers are having to do with this new environment that they've had to work in, uh, marking papers, keeping on top of uh, uh, children's progress, that the, the, the delivery has been, uh, I'm not going to say relatively straightforward, comparatively, and what I mean is comparatively to the assessment process. So uh, I think we're all pleased to hear that there's going to be a, I think you used the word tangible, um, Councillor Buchanan, um, something that is something that people can uh, refer back to and in the knowledge that it's um, it's all based on sound evidence. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Um, OK, I think in summary, it, it, uh, as I say, two very um, important papers um, regarding kind of COVID recovery and indeed the situation in schools at the moment. Uh, I think this paper particularly uh, giving us a very clear indication of um, what is being done and what will be done in terms of certification for national qualifications. I think highlighting um, the robust processes in place to ensure that results are, um, you know, clear and robust and um, that young people essentially attain uh, everything we would expect for them uh, and, uh, and that we are working with them to ensure they get um, the results that they deserve. I think also the point is well made about our, our teachers once again and support staff for the amount of work that they are putting in to ensure that young people um, succeed. So uh, another thanks, I think, to them this morning. OK, are we happy just to, to note then those reports? And obviously we will hear further detail as always around national qualifications and, and indeed the process uh, later in the year. Um, that then uh, concludes our business this morning. Um, so can I just thank everyone for their attendance uh, uh, and once again we look forward to um, schools continuing to return to that face-to-face -face learning and certainly we will hear more detail on that. Thank you. 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 Thanks all. Bye. Thanks. Bye.